This sea pickle farm is so fast and efficient, it appears to make sea pickles from nothing. And running it will create 1,028 stacks of sea pickles per hour, which is 38 single chests per hour, which is 65,792 items per hour. And even with all of these hoppers, the storage system is still not fast enough to keep up with the ridiculous speed that the sea pickles are generated from this machine. And I'm going to build it in survival on Truly Bedrock. Which means I'm going to need a whole bunch of resources. And of course, somewhere to build it, which is going to be over here at my skyscraper village, above the flower farm that I built in the last episode, which could make life quite interesting trying to build above this thing, but it will be okay. We're playing with water, which might be a problem, but it'll be all right. I'm confident. And I've just broken that glass with my rocket because I'm a moron. So in order to build all of those hoppers, I'm going to need an absolute ton of wood. And it just so happens to be that there is a giant birch forest the other side of my little base area. And I don't particularly like birch very much. So it makes the perfect wood for making chests to turn into hoppers, which is fantastic. I'm also going to need a whole bunch of iron, which I'm going to grab from my iron farm. And a whole bunch of redstone, which I'm going to grab from my clerics. And a little bit of glass, which I'm going to grab from my librarians. Now, one of the things I don't need is a wandering trader's head. But I want one, so I'm going to take it. However, some of the things I do need are leaves. So I'm going to take those as well. Now, a couple more things I'm going to need are slime, which I'm hoping I've got inside of my redstone box just here. I have, so that's good. Coral, obviously, which I've got a little bit of, but not much. And sea pickles to get us started. And the one other thing that I need is honey, which again, I'm very much hoping I've got some of in my ender chest, but it's it's not looking, it's not looking good. Oh, geez. Now, I did have some honey right at the beginning of this. Oh, geez. Let's not do that. Now, at the very beginning of this season, I actually did have a whole bunch of honey because I was using that at my starter base. So I'm going to head over there now and see if there's any over there. And if there isn't, I do have a little bee farm down here that I might be able to get some from. Because I only need four honey blocks. Uh, I remember this place well. It's been a while, though. Oh, there is some honey ready, so that's good news. But do I have any honey kicking about down here anywhere? It's not looking good. I've been through nearly every single one of my chests now and I am yet to find any honey. And there we go. No, there is absolutely no honey down here at all. Oh, man. Bees, I would very much appreciate it if you would give me some honey. It could take me a while to generate four honey blocks just from this little farm. A little bit longer than I've got, perhaps. So, maybe there's another way. There's an area on this server that I happen to have neglected quite substantially throughout the course of this season so far, and that is this spawn area, where we have all of the shops and things. And there could well be honey for sale here, I have absolutely no idea. Apparently there is a sea pickle shop, which, you know, that's great and all. I don't want to buy sea pickles. I want to make my own. But yes, I need honey. Where will I find honey? That's a bone shop, clearly. And this is a potion shop. And this is a rip-off gambling machine. And this shop sells prismarine. Oh, it nearly rhymed that. I could make a song. This shop is absolutely of no good to me at all. However, I see honey on these trees inside of this fancy place. What is it? And how do I get in? Oh, what a beautiful looking shop. Welcome to Miss Bee Haven. Beehives, I don't need. Honey blocks, there we go. How much are they? Two diamonds. That's that's actually very reasonable. I shall oh, and there's an ender chest here as well. My prayers have been answered. Just so happens I have two spare diamonds here. I shall take the honey blocks. This is fantastic. So there we go. In this box, I have just about everything I'm going to need. Ish, sort of. I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff I've forgotten, but that should get us on our way. And whatever I haven't got in there, I'm sure I can find in my ender chest. So it's time to go home and start building an epic sea pickle farm. Okay, so back at our building site, the first thing I'm going to need to do is build a platform above this thing so we've actually got something to build off of, which I'll probably just make out of smooth stone for now because I have plenty of that to hand. And with that now in place, I have a nice area to be building this thing I could really do to find the center. And I think that center there... That center there, which means our center is there. Perfect. So first of all, I'm going to need to craft an absolutely ridiculous number of hoppers, which means turning all of this tasty birch into planks. 
and then into chests. And now I have many hoppers and a handful of chests as well. I'm also going to need a bunch of trap doors, which fortunately I already happen to have quite a few of those kicking about, which is good because now I'm just about out of wood again. What are you looking at? Nothing. You are. You're looking at me again. What? What? What's your problem? You keep building stuff in our little village. I'm modernizing you, mate. It's going to be an amazing, futuristic skyscraper town. We don't want modern. We like tradition. Oh, shut up. And realistically, I think that's about it in terms of ingredients that I'm going to require. I'm sure I've forgotten something, but I, I really do think that's probably all, everything I need. At least I hope it is. Apart from bone... Oh, yeah, sea pickles and coral and bone meal. I have no bone meal because I've used it all. Although there might be still some still in here. There's a bit in there. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom in order to make, my, make it easy to work my way up. So I'm going to start with my output chest here. I guess. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two output chests on this. I'm going to change my design already from the original. And underneath that, what I'm going to do is then have another chest there. And that's going to be our final output chest. Because this farm is ridiculously fast and spits out more than you could possibly ever imagine. And I'm tempted to actually raise all of this upper block. So I've actually got some space underneath this thing for other things later on. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so out of the back of each one of these chests, we're going to have a couple of lines of hoppers. And these are going to be four hoppers long like that. However, the last one on each end needs to actually face into that one. So that's one hopper line and that's the second hopper line. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So get rid of that one there and have that pointed into that one. And there we go. We've got a couple of hopper lines on each side now. And at each end of these, now that we've got two hopper lines, I'm going to need a lot of hoppers going into those like that. Are you with me so far? It's going well, isn't it? Okay, next then, we're going to have a double chest on top of that one there. And a double chest on top of that one there. And if you think we've used a lot of hoppers already, we barely even got started. Because coming out of each one of these chests, we then need another six hoppers. And that's going to face into that one there. So we've got one hopper line there and one hopper line there. Both feeding into that chest and they're going to have another load of hoppers on and this is going to happen on each side this is ridiculous <laughs> why do you use hopper minecarts they're faster well technically yes but fitting them into this system well I, probably possible but i didn't yep shut up it's fine and with all of these in place it's just a case of sticking on four more chests on four more pillars of hoppers like this and now we're nearly done with all of the hoppers. However, I don't want to put any more in yet because the middle of this thing is quite complicated to build with the pistons and stuff like that in place. So I'm going to try and figure out that. Now, bear in mind, I built this in creative. I designed it in creative. I've no idea how to build it in survival, so I'm winging it. So if the instructions I'm giving you right now are wrong, it's kind of not my fault. You should plan better. You should organize. Oh, shut up. It's fine. Just look, just look what I look. It's fine. So first of all, we need a space to put our pistons on. And there are four pistons in the middle of this thing. And unfortunately, it doesn't have a two wide middle because it's got a one wide middle, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do is make a three by three platform like this. And then on here, we're going to have four sticky pistons like this. Not like that. No, that's wrong. Like this. And then on top of those, this is where our slime and our honey comes in, you see. So we're going to have a honey block there and a honey block there. And a honey block there. And a honey block there. And I've just realized all of this is completely wrong. It's all wrong, guys. I've done it wrong. All of that needs to be over by another... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I told you I was going to get it wrong. In fact, it's not all of that. It's all of that needs to be... Oh, oh jeez. Another block over. Otherwise, my slime's going to stick to me hoppers, mate. So once you've got all of this in place, then smash all of this stuff that you've done to bits and rebuild it all but a block further away oh geez and there we go i have rebuilt it all but a block further away right let's get rid of these temporary blocks that i've put down there so the reason we're using leaves is because leaves can be waterlogged and they also can't be stuck to by slime or honey which makes them incredibly useful for what we're doing to today i love building in survival it's great so i've surrounded that by leaves on one block and i'm now going to surround it by leaves another block up like so and now at this point, I could use glass or trapdoors or any block, really. And I think instead of using the trapdoors, I'm just going to go for glass to make this thing a little bit easier to see what's going on. So what I want to do is put glass on the outside of all of these leaf blocks at this level so that when I waterlog them, 
the water's not going to spill everywhere. Now, I don't need to do the leaves lower down. They're just literally there to stop the water pouring out of these leaves above. So with our platform already looking kind of snazzy, what we need to do now is look at where we're going to put the rest of the hoppers in. And I have a bunch left. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Hopefully it will be. But the hoppers are basically going to lead into these chests here. Now, it's up to you which way you face the one in the middle. It can go into either line. It doesn't really matter. As long as you've got all of the hoppers leading into these chests like this. However, I, I've... Hmm. How, what have I done here? The whole thing's off by a block again. It all needs to be a block this way. The entire thing is... Oh, my goodness me. I'm a moron. Yeah, so th this glass block should be here. Oh, jeez. I'm going to smash the into... Oh, man. Don't do what I do, guys. Do do what I've done at the end of this video. Not Don't follow it through. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so smash it all to bits again. And then rebuild all the stuff you've just painstakingly done over all that. Oh, jeez. You're really good at tutorials? No, I'm not. Shut up. Don't you patronise me, you pest. I was being sarcastic. I know you're being sarcastic. Okay, I have just about rebuilt everything back in the place where it should have been in the start, which it wasn't, but it is now. So I'm just putting the glass back in to stop the water seeping out of the leaves, which I haven't put in yet. And now we can get back to doing these hoppers. So, like I said, we've got a couple of hopper lines going those ways, and they are both filtering into these chests. And we're also going to have a hopper there filtering into that one, a hopper there into that one, a hopper there, and a hopper there. And then we also need hoppers going into these chests from the end, like that, on both sides. So now you can see we have... Just about all of the hoppers in except for four. And like I said, it doesn't really matter which direction these ones face in as long as they go into one or the other. So I'm just going to make this all go clockwise. So I'm going to put one there facing that way, one there facing that way, one there facing that way, and one there facing that way. That is pretty much all of that layer now done. However, we now need some more leaves. So we need a leaf block there, 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 and a leaf block there. Marvellous. Okay, so next I'm going to waterlog all of these leaf blocks like this. So waterlog all of the leaves at this level here. And then we're going to also waterlog the leaves that are connected to these hoppers here like this. And now there is many, many water in this system. This That hopper needs to be waterlogged and so does this one over here. So put glass on the outside of those, grab a little bit more water and waterlog that hopper. Now, when the coral, which is going to sit on those slime blocks, pops up, it's never going to not be touching water, so it won't dry out. So let's put some coral down, and I don't think I've quite got enough here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I need three more pieces. So we're going to have mismatched coral. Oh, geez. I use red, so it's not quite so mismatched. And then we go, we'll fill in those last bits there. So none of that coral's going to die, which is absolutely fantastic. However, we do need one more piece of coral. I also need one more bucket of water, which I'm going to take from a water source that I've created somewhere. No water source is in here now. There we go, got a water source. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it down that hole there. And then I need to put this coral on top of that hole. And the easiest way to do that, I guess, is just to throw it in there grab a piston, activate that piston, and then break the piston. And there we go. That, ho that hole is now waterlogged below it, so that shouldn't dry out even if this water disappears. And then we can pop our sea pickles on top, which of course we're going to want four of, so it spreads on the first try without wasting any bone meal. We need one more bucket of water on that, so let's grab that one there and throw it onto those sea pickles, and that should spread the water out nicely. Now for the tricky part. I actually need to get a dispenser above those. So I'm going to put those there like that. I'm going to put the dispenser facing down on top of that like that, which I guess wasn't all that tricky as it turned out. And I would kind of like this water to spread a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some more of this corner stuff and I'm going to just put it down there and hopefully try and get that water to spread a bit further. I, oh, geez. Now I've got water all over the edge. Oh, geez. Stop. Oh, no. I'm making a mess. Well, there's a good mess to have because I actually do need to have glass around this level anyway. So we're going to put glass on top of the chests like this. Glass along that front line of hoppers there. Glass on those chests like that. And it doesn't need to be glass. I just like to use glass because it's see-through so you can see what's going on. And then glass on that chest there. And that should be the whole thing surrounded by glass. And thanks to my amazing waterlogged leaves and waterlogged central bit, 
None of that coral died because it's always touching water. Fantastic. What's not fantastic, though, is it does appear that I've built the entire thing wrong again. You see, there shouldn't be this many hoppers down each side, so somehow I've managed to get these chests a lot further away than they should be. There should be five hoppers here in the middle, not seven. So the chest should go there and there. How do I do this? Oh, man. Okay, so smash those ones to bits like that and put a chest there. Put a glass on top of it there, jeez. See, this is the problem. When you build it from the bottom upwards, it's difficult to know where everything should go. If I built it from upwards down, <laughs> then it would have been a lot easier, I think. But, you know, we live and learn. So now what I need to do is remove that um, leaf block and put a hopper there. That's it. This is looking more like what it should do. <laughs> jeez. Should also check the screenshots that I've taken more regularly. I wondered why the water didn't seem like it was spreading properly. So now these three hoppers are in totally the wrong place, which means these three hoppers are in totally the wrong place. And I've run out of hoppers. Good. Which means the glass should go across there like that. Jeez. What a mess I've made of this thing. And of course, that means all of this below is in totally the wrong place as well. So I'm going to have to smash all of these hoppers to bits. I'm so sorry, peeps, if you were following this along and thinking, oh, yeah, I could do that. And then, uh, then I've gone and done this, haven't I? I told you it'd be water going everywhere. This is exactly why I wanted to put that roof above the foul farm below. However, I think that... Oh, dear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, goody. It's all going rather well. Okay, the top section is now how it actually looks in my screenshots, apart from a couple of things. So I was right with the leaf blocks having to be up at this level like this. However, I didn't quite get them in the right place before. So the leaf blocks go like this. They want to be waterlogged as well. Oh, and look, a wandering trader has appeared again. Hello, sir. How do you like my axe, mate? I guess the good news about rebuilding all of this is that I'm going to have substantially more hoppers available at the end of it all, which is nice. But sometimes it would just be nice to get it right first time, you know? But at least this way you might be able to see how I'm actually connecting all of this a little bit more, obviously. And the last chest to go in, one hopper there, one hopper there, and then this one comes round to here like this. So now, there we go, that's everything back in, and I do have a few, not that many more, but a few more hoppers left in my inventory. I've probably got a bunch of stuff in here as well, I have, and I've got a whole bunch of blocks that I placed that don't need to be anywhere. So good news, we are now 99% of the way there. All that's left to do, really, is the redstone clock system and the dispenser disposal system, which is, well, that's the easiest thing to do because all we're going to do with that is we're going to pop a hopper there and we're going to put a chest on here for our bone meal. That's nice and easy. We want a solid block in front of that dispenser there and then we're just going to bring some glass out across here like this. There we go. And now we just need our clock system and the clock that i'm using for this is the easiest clock you have ever seen it's absolutely great and i am going to use a couple of slabs here because i don't want to activate these hoppers uh, while the redstone's going on blocking them from being able to transfer their stuff so i'm going to grab these slabs and put those slabs there like that and that's going to mean i can run the redstone line around there without affecting those hoppers so redstone it couldn't be simpler literally all you got to do is just put it next to all of the pistons, which is hard because scaffolding sucks. So all the way around there like that. And then just make sure if you go around this side, that the back side of this piston gets it in as well. That's all of the pistons linked up to the redstone. And this thing is going to have the easiest yet one of the fastest redstone clocks money can buy. So we have a couple of solid blocks with redstone dust going on there. I'm going to remove that there and fall off it, apparently. Great, thanks. I, I didn't want to I hate scaffolding so much. It's so dumb. You was connected to scaffolding. All right, I'm going to use solid blocks as temporary blocks because they're more reliable. I'm going to put a sticky piston there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this lever and I'm going to power that redstone line because I don't want this clock to start yet, which does mean my pistons have now gone up. And as you should see, when we go up here, the coral below has now popped up to be in line with the sea pickles. And that means it's still underwater, so it's still not going to die. Right, on top of that sticky piston, we're going to put a redstone block like so. And then next to this redstone block, we're going to have a piece of glass there. 
And no, it's not. It's going to go a block down. Next to the sticky piston, we're going to have a piece of glass. And on here, we're going to have some redstone dust. And we're going to build a little redstone dust glass tower so that we can get the redstone all the way to the top nice and easily. And we want it to stay in sync with the piston, so we don't want to be adding repeaters or torches or anything like that. We just want to use a nice, solid redstone line, just like that. There we go. That is the redstone 100% done. So if I was to put bone meal in there now, the system's finished. Let's check it out. Let's steal some bone meal from the farm below, which is now totally broken. And let's hop back up to the top. And put our bone meal in this chest and watch it filter through nicely into the dispenser then all we need to do is flick the lever on and that is it we have a sea pickle farm that grows sea pickles so fast you don't even see them appear and they are now filtering all into these hoppers filling up these chests which are filling up those hoppers which are filling up these chests which are filling up these hoppers, which are filling up these chests. And look how incredibly quickly those sea pickles... It doesn't seem as quick on this one as it did on the server. Are we getting backlogs already? How am I getting backlogs? Okay, let's find a way to, do, to get rid of these backlogs then. We're going to use some more chests and some more hoppers. And as you can see, we've got all of those hoppers just going into one double chest there. So what I'm actually going to do here is instead of having this dog leg round there like that, I'm going to have that hopper line continue down there and have that one go straight into it there. And I'm going to get rid of those hoppers there. And I'm going to put another double chest facing that way and then have hoppers coming straight down from that into that line. So we've now got two double chests worth feeding down into this line here, which should mean things are coming through there a bit quicker. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. So let's get rid of that one there and make it face in that direction. And then let's get rid of those there put a chest in there like that and then hoppers coming down from that chest into that line so we shouldn't get any backups going on up there now we probably will start getting backups yeah you can already see there's massive backups in these two chests here and of course that's why it doesn't seem as quick because on my redstone testing world we didn't have this split down here it was all just going into a single chest at that point there now we could make that go a bit faster by doing that there and doing that there and that should make things go substantially quicker coming in. Now, one thing to keep your eyes peeled for, although I didn't have any spillages on my redstone testing world, to see if pe sea pickles are actually popping up onto this glass and popping over, because they do tend to jump up a fair bit. Now, like I said, I didn't experience that in my redstone testing world, but it's not impossible it could happen. And if it does happen, the easiest way to get around that would just be to put more glass around this level here. You would get rid of that redstone and put that up there instead. And yeah, we can do that just to be on the safe side. But now you can see this farm is running at maximum efficiency. And I don't think that you could get sea pickle farm any faster than this. And the reason for that is the sea pickle growth. <gasps> we've got a dead piece of coral. So it could go faster. But apart from the dead piece of coral, the, the sea pickle growth is that diamond shape. It won't spread any further than that. So we're getting the maximum amount of spread from each piece of bone meal. And because the pistons are constantly moving, there is no pause, the sea pickles are getting spread at exactly the right time and broken exactly as the pistons are moving, which means there's no way that could go faster. Now, there are a bunch of sea pickles hanging up on there, which I didn't get in my test world, but that's probably because I got this ridiculous water spread thing going on because I built it wrong. So let me turn it off. Let's grab an alive piece of coral to replace that dead piece of coral because... Well, that shouldn't have died. But then again, that's probably me getting things wrong and rebuilding things. And then replace the dead coral. So that should be fine now. And then, yeah, you can see the water is uh, as water sourced all around the middle, which it wasn't in my test world. So I just need to stop that from happening, which I'm not sure I could do particularly easily with my buckets. No, I'm going to have to place blocks down there. Okay, no problem, mate. Okay, so I've removed all of the flowing water from the top section now. So when I smash this glass, it should actually flow correctly this time rather than being all over the place, which we'll see in a second. And we shouldn't get water sources at the top, which means the sea pickles won't get hung up on that center block there, which means now when we turn this on, we are going to get 100% maximum efficiency. This is amazing. I don't normally care about efficient farms, but today I've actually built one. And here we go again. Let's keep our eye on it. Make sure nothing gets stuck on the middle, which it can't now, which is amazing. This is ridiculous. 
Yeah, no, oh no, that one's died again. How does that one keep dying? So I must have not waterlogged something properly down there. But apart from that, everything's working perfectly. <laughs> what have I not waterlogged? There'll be a leaf block. So yeah, look, those, those, leaf block, those leaf blocks there, I've completely forgotten to waterlog. See, this is why it was a good idea to use trapdoors, because then I don't have to smash the glass to get in to re-waterlog everything. But on this occasion, we don't have a choice. I need to waterlog that and that. There we go. Now it'll all be okay. Don't worry, guys. We fix it. No dying coral, please. The bone meal is going down at a reasonable rate. And whilst it does look like it's spamming it, you can see by the redstone line and the speed that they're actually leaving the dispenser's inventory, it is not going too quickly. It's not overusing bone meal. It is just literally using one per spread, which is great. And yes, now that coral is not dying because the things are actually properly waterlogged. Good. And look how many seed pickles we're getting. It's ridiculous. It is literally the fastest, most efficient seed pickle farm in the world. And I'm sure it could be built smaller and more compact. But who cares about that? We've got more seed pickles than I could ever possibly need for my, you know, for the rest of my life. Let's check out the chests. Oh my goodness. Yes, we already have. Oh, jeez. Well over a double chest worth already. So after that short amount of time, we've already got well over a double chest worth, which means it's time for a rate test. But before we do a rate test, uh, I want to answer a question I got from the last video, which was, for this flower farm, does it create enough bone meal from composting the flowers to make it self-sufficient with bone meal? And the answer is no, because you get 8.75 flowers per bone meal. And flowers only have a 65% chance of making a new level in your composter for bone meal, which means on average you need 10.77 flowers per piece of bone meal. So it's almost enough, but not quite. With the sea pickle farm, from the tests I've already done in my test world, they, you get seven on average sea pickles per piece of bone meal. So again, this is not going to be a bone meal farm. I've set my timer for two minutes. I'm going to start the timer as soon as I flick this lever, like so. And now I'm just going to leave it running for two minutes. Hopefully my bone meal will last that long. It should do. There's plenty in there. Let's see how much we get from that. Look at the speed. It's coming into the chest. This is ridiculous. And the results are in. This is how much we got in two minutes, which after doing a little bit of math works out at 68,100 items per hour, which is 1,064 stacks per hour or 39.4 single chests per hour, which is absolutely fantastic. See, I thought there might be a little bit of a slowdown on this with it being on a server, but that's actually slightly faster than the results I got in my test world, which just goes to show you the randomness of how many sea pickles you'll get from each spread does have an effect. Now, there is also one thing that has caused a slight problem. I did have to pick up a couple of stacks of the sea pickles from up here because, as you can see, the water has created water sources again somehow. I don't understand how. It doesn't make any sense that it has, but it has. Now, it could be these blocks here. That has happened before, where a solid block would cause water sources to form underneath it. Could well be that. But again, that didn't happen on my test world after running it for significantly longer amounts of time. So, not 100% sure what's happening with that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it's still ridiculously fast. It's still ridiculously powerful. And it's still, despite having a ridiculous number of hoppers built into it, relatively easy to build. And on that note, as the sun goes down and the moon comes up on Truly Bedrock, that is another episode done from me. So I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.